This is the breast tissue with well circumscribed lesion called fibroadenoma. The normal breast tissue can be seen in this part of the slide. It consists of multiple uh, ductolobular units. The lobules are relatively small, well, circumsc uh, well circumscribed, and they consist of uh, multiple small asini. We can resemble two types of cells, the luminal inner cells and uh, the outer layer of myoepithelial cells. In between the lobules we have uh, the normal fibrous stroma and uh, the adipose tissue. Here we have the clear border between the fibroadenoma and the adjacent breast tissue. It is quite clear and sharp and also macroscopically uh, the fibroadenomas are usually well circumscribed lesion with a smooth surface and uh, they are mobile uh, lesions unlike uh, carcinomas for example um, which are associated with infiltrative type of growth and uh, the border uh, between carcinoma and the adjacent breast tissue is usually not clear. Fibroadenoma has two components, uh, um, the compressed epithelial uh, ducts and uh, the adjacent fibrous stroma. The fibrous stroma consists of uh, collagen fibers and the cellular component, uh, which are usually fibroblasts and myofibroblasts. The stroma is relatively hypocellular. Uh, the fibroblasts are bland and uh, we should not see uh, cytologic atypia, so we shouldn't see many mitotic figures uh, or hypercellular areas. The stroma can have a myxoid appearance, which is quite common among younger women, or it can be hyalinized, uh, which is uh, more common among older patients. This case of fibroadenoma is associated with quite myxoid, loose uh, um, fibrous stroma. We can also appreciate these co compressed ducts, which formed, uh, which form um, the epithelial component. Uh, it is benign lesion and benign epithelial structures. Therefore, we can see the two layers of cells, the luminal cells and outer myoepithelial cells. A lot of fibroadenomas are commonly associated with mild epithelial proliferation or epithelial hyperplasia. Uh, however, atypical ductal or lobular hyperplasias are very rare. Uh, very rarely fibroadenomas can also be associated with uh, ductal or lobular carcinoma in situ or with infiltrative carcinoma, but those cases are extremely, extremely rare. We can differentiate two different patterns of epithelial component. The more common intracanalicular pattern where the stroma causes elongation, distortion, and compression of uh, the glandular or epithelial component. The areas of complete compression are usually intermixed with uh, residual lumina, which is sometimes described as beaded pattern, as the, it looks like the beads on the string, or the perils in the strings, or whatever you like. The second pattern is called pericanalicular pattern and um, it is um, it can be seen in this part of the slide where the stroma um, surrounds the glandular elements uh, without compression, without distortion, and without these linear arrangement. Uh, both of these terms are purely descriptive and they are not really important. Uh, they do not have any um, any deeper meaning. They are not connected um, uh, to the uh, prognosis. Well, um, <clears throat> well, we should be familiar with them because uh, they are quite useful if we want to diagnose fibroadenoma. So just uh, uh, so we can describe the structure that we see. Some ducts can be cystically dilated. We can see it here and that's quite common. And sometimes we can see sclerosing adenosis, epithelial calcifications, or papillary apocrine changes. Uh, when we can recognize these uh, changes, uh, we can diagnose complex fibroadenoma.
and those complex fibroadenomas are associated with a very slightly increased risk of um, carcinoma uh, in the breast. Fibroadenomas are usually described as um, benign tumors in traditional textbooks. However, in most cases, uh, the stromal and epithelial component are uh, polyclonal or non-neoplastic, so re they represent uh, some sort of hyperplastic lesion. Estrogen plays an important role in pathogenesis in most of the cases. So the estrogen stimulation causes the hyperplasia of the stroma, and that causes uh, the compression of the epithelial component. Some of the fibroadenomas can involute and uh, it is not necessary to uh, surgically remove all of them. However, at least some of the cases are associated with clonal proliferation of the stroma, and uh, these cases are associated with uh, different behavior. So these lesions uh, growths, uh, growth, and uh, they behave like um, uh, more like a benign neoplasms. And this is another case of fibroadenoma. We can appreciate well-circumscribed lesion, which is usually nodular, and uh, the nodularity can be seen in this case. It was not that clear in the previous picture. Uh, even in, a, in this low magnification, we can see uh, the ductal component. This is the intracanalicular pattern, and here we have the fibrous stroma in between the epithelial structures. Again, some epithelial uh, ducts can be dilated, which can be seen in some fibroadenomas. Here we have an example of beaded pattern. And we should always check uh, whether the fibrous stroma uh, is not associated uh, with uh, cytological atypia higher proliferation rate or hypercellularity. Uh, so the main differential diagnosis is Philodes tumor. <clears throat> so we need to exclude uh, the atypical um, appearance of the stroma, which is common in Philodes tumor. We should check for mitotic figures. Uh, stromal overgrowth, which, um, which is uh, when we see the cellular stroma uh, without epithelial component, which is commonly seen uh, in a Philodes tumor. Um, <clears throat> the epithelial component is bland. Again, it consists of two layers of cells, myoepithelial cells and luminal cells. On this part of the slide, we have intracanalicular, uh, I'm sorry, pericanalicular pattern of growth. So this is typical fibroadenoma. Thanks for watching.